Enable notifications by ringing the bell. Capcom produces games. Yes, they do. And some of them are actually really good. Yes. The Resident Evil franchise. Uh, Devil May Cry 1 and 3. And 4. I, I, I think 4 is actually a pretty good game. Um, you know, they when they're not ignoring Mega Man, they, they can yeah. do some pretty good stuff. De- uh, Dead Rising. Yeah. Dead Rising 2 was actually pretty good. Three was like what and four from what I'm from what I'm hearing is just like ugh. Um, but Capcom has had a revitalization in in here in like the last year or so because of uh because of Resident Evil Seven. Yeah. You know, it was a lot of people's game of the year. It was and, pretty uh, good. And a lot of people's a lot of people's opinion, it was one of the better games, uh, one of the better games that Capcom's ever made, and I'd have to agree because. They designed an engine specifically for it. Mm-hmm. They went in and like made the RE engine just for that game. And they got to capitalize on a uh, a market that was pointedly not being filled by uh, going in to sort of the uh, PT style. Yeah. In some in some ways. Which which PT for those of you who do not know out there, you know, if you're living under a rock and or you don't like video games, is it? Is it nice living under a rock? I'm I'm curious. Well, I mean, caves are well. Temperate, honestly, if you were you know, under, general, I mean, honestly, so. Ben, if you were under a rock, all you'd find is oil, bugs. If you were under a rock, I know. I know it was bad. I'm not selling it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fine. <laughs> fine. Fine. Can't believe I'm just no selling my boss here. Anyway. Um. Yeah. I'll just call it. Yeah. I'll just call you the Great Antonio. Hey, so, wrestling joke for anyone who gets that. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. So, Leon Kennedy versus Frank West. Okay, show of hands, who here thinks this is a really weird battle? From my limited knowledge of, yeah. I don't know why you're worried about Frank. He's covered wars, you know. That line has to come up at least once in this. Yes, exactly. Uh, and I'm guessing it's going to be from Boomstick. But he's covered wars, you know. But the the thing is, like, you have a photographer versus, you know, trained secret service agent. Yeah. And uh, Micah's favorite. I mean, he's, he's all right. I mean, that's that's really the only Resident Evil that I could really like play and enjoy. So I mean. you need to try and play seven. Okay. I mean, I'm. I'd like I heard, to see heard... you play through seven. I played some of five, and it's, I don't know, I just didn't Five play. was not. Five, I, I five lost Oh, lost no, I have played seven. seven. Yeah, yeah, I have played through. We we killed the mother. That was as far as we got. We red-boxed it. Okay. Oh, okay, so you've you've actually so, played, yeah. like, a decent chunk of the game. Yeah. Okay, so, cool. yeah. seven, what did you think of it? Oh, it was really well done. I, I hated it because it's super creepy. Um, that it pulled but, up what it wanted. Working as intended. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, just opening fr- refrigerators was... Horrible. Oh yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't do that. I jumped at so many of those things. Yummy. Yep. <laughs> so Leon Kennedy versus Frank West, definitely a weird one. But I will say this: both of these characters are in Marvel versus Capcom, and both of these characters. No. Yeah, Leon. Leon's not. Chris Redfield. Chris is. Redfield is. I thought Leon was in a nope. Marvel versus Capcom. Nope. Uh, Chris Redfield and Chris Redfield, Jill and Wesker are, but Leon is not. I could have sworn. Let me nope. make make sure. Is it Jill before they kidnapped her and turned her hair blonde? After. After. Yeah. It's kind of odd. Yeah, it's a weird it's pick. Like, oh, by the way, this virus or whatever also turned your hair blonde. She, just... has, she has the, the control thing oh, still on her yeah. chest. Fantastic. Yeah. So Although weird. her alternate costume is old Jill, okay. but it's still there. Oh. That's which weird. is weird. It's weird and I don't like it. That is a little strange. Presumably you would want just... Like Jill Valentine. Jill, not, yeah. you know. Eh. Oh, okay. So he was a concept to be in uh, Marvel vs. Capcom three, but it never but he never got they yeah. never got approval to do it. But then okay. you know, they they brought in Chris Redfield and then it's just like I mean, we're already kind of stacking it here with because they also had um is it the Tyrant or Nemesis? Nemesis. It was Nemesis, yeah. So you had four Resident Evil characters. Which I feel like there would be some overlap in a game like that with, you know, Chris, 
Jill. Well, Wesker's his own little thing, but like I mean, like human operatives. I yeah. mean, with well, guns. That, yeah. Well, there, well, there was in Resident Evil Six. It's just Resident Evil Six was kind of where the where even Capcom realized, okay, we need to do something else. We don't. We don't because, talk about okay because R6. overlap because the stories did overlap. And when you play them chronologically, the stories are actually okay. It's just the gameplay is so bad. The gameplay is bunk. I mean, they did bring in an interesting new playable character. Yeah. Sherry Birkin. Yeah, I like Sherry. I was like, I like Sherry. That's a And I like Jake as well. I like Jake as well. Jake Jake, was fine. Jake was okay. I mean, honestly, he he was pretty much a nerfed Wesker that was a good guy. Didn't go evil. Well, good, good is a... All anti-hero. Better. Okay. But, okay, Leon Kennedy versus Frank West. Let's watch this death battle because I don't know what's happening anymore. Okay, okay. This is a this is a weird pick for a fight. It's a little strange. Of course, I don't know that much about Frank West, so maybe it's not as weird as we think. I mean, he's fought zombies and he's covered in wars, you know. Surviving the undead apocalypse takes grit and perseverance. Aim for the head, you dumb dumbs. With all that and some luck, these two became experts in zombie fighting. Leon Kennedy, the top cop and government agent in Resident Evil. And Frank West, the backyard wrestling MacGyver of Dead Rising. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. Backyard and wrestling it's our MacGyver. Job That's a good title. Weapons, armor and skills to find out who would win a death battle. As a child, Leon Scott Kennedy's hey, father Renfro. instilled in him a strong sense of justice. Following in his footsteps, yep, Leon George Romero directed force, that. Determined yep. to uncover the darkest riddles and uphold the law. So, for his first ever assignment, he took the biggest challenge he could find. Instead of picking an easy job like dissing out dastardly parking tickets, he was off to Raccoon City to investigate a bunch of mysterious murders. His instincts were good, perhaps too good. Officer Kennedy wound up choosing the most challenging and dangerous assignment he possibly could have. Yep. Yeah, it turns out Trash Panda Town was due for a big old zombie outbreak, and Leon got stuck in the middle. How's that for hazing the rookie? He wasn't a rookie for long. After fending off the zombie threat and even taking a bullet from the grassy knoll, Leon was recruited by the American government as a special agent. I guess the Raccoon Bodyguard City incident is kind of the definition of get good. Apocalyptic events. <laughs> in all true. cases, the people that are bitten become infected themselves and go on to attack others. The only way to stop the spread of infection is to destroy the infected's brains. Shoot them in the head. His training at the police academy turned him into a pretty tough guy. But as a special agent, he became unstoppable. All thanks to his extensive firearms training, extreme driving tests, and the study of tactical response scenarios. Guess what martial art they teach American Secret Service members? Probably a guy. traitorous Russian one called Sistema, and Leon is an expert at it. Oh. Sistema is a free-form martial art focusing on disabling targets via pressure points and joints. While not specifically lethal on its own, Sistema also involves quite a lot of training with knives and firearms. That's good, because I don't think fists would be enough to take on monsters like the tyrants, skinless dogs, and... <laughs> is that Gene Simmons? Right. Bio-organic weapons, or B.O.W.s, were far tougher than your ordinary... Oh, hey! Hey, hey! El Gigante! ...has the weaponry to take them on. He's efficient with just about any kind of gun, but okay. like me, he loves carrying around his favorites, including the Silver Ghost, a unique pistol specifically designed for him. He's also got a modified 50 caliber Desert Eagle Magnum, a gift from his father. Lucky bastard, all I ever got from my dad was a sore cheek. While he has no problem dual-wielding handguns, Leon is extremely proficient in dealing damage with heavier weapons, such as the M203 grenade launcher or his ludicrous rocket launcher special. This red-tipped wrecker of an RPG is far more powerful than an ordinary propelled grenade. The gun itself looks similar to a classic RPG yep, model, yep. first used as an anti-tank weapon by the Soviet Union. Since yep. the red grenade is so deadly, it's probably a thermobaric explosive booster, which can launch over 600 feet for a 60-foot-wide explosion. Yep. That's more than enough to take down one of those Bow Wows. Leon has plenty Bow-wows. of experience with hand yep. grenades, rifles, flamethrowers, etc., but one weapon stands above the them knife. all. His Combat knife. knife. 
Yeah. Oh man, the Krauser fight. Hey, Krauser. Is way more than some plain old wrist cutter. He's practically magic when it comes to his skill with a knife. And if he gets hit, he'll be fine. Probably. I mean, he's wearing lightweight level three tactical body armor, which can stop bullets from a magnum and even some rifles. If he does take a hit, he's carrying some healing herbs, which he can also Herb. take a hit from. If you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Damn it. Snorting drug boomstick. Healing herbs have a history of being applied as an aerosol spray or ground up within paper. Well, yep. once Leon became the government's numero uno answer to all of their zombie problems, he was stopping outbreaks all over the world. He had to pull off some awesome feats to do it. He even had to make some horrible sacrifices along the way. Like that poor, poor Ducati. Leon is strong enough to crush a skull or even force open the jaws of a giant infected shark. The shark appears to be similar in size to a great white, Man. which has a bite strength of nearly two tons. What game was that? That shit's crazy. Is this six? Which, let's nope. talk a little bit about Leon's or, relationship or is it? with Boulder. I, I can't remember, uh, honestly. With There's what? so much about the Boulders. game. I, you know, I wish I could forget. Like really big rocks. You would know that. Well, he fought Chris Redfield to a standstill. I forgot still. you could the do that. In Boulder in Puncher in himself. Oh, but while yeah. Leon doesn't seem to have Chris's brute strength, he did push over this giant rock with a little help. Leon is pretty quick, too. Did he just dodged a, a moving laser grid yep. and even outraced this tyrant, which, according to the Inside of Biohazard Guide, could run up to 43 miles per um. hour. He's even thrown his trusty knife fast enough that this creepy guy didn't even react until, uh. The average time for a person to Man. perceive and react to movement is a quarter Fucking of a Salazar. second. Leon appears to be about 30 feet away from his target Salazar here, meaning he threw his knife around 80 miles per hour. The average speed for most world-class knife throwers is only 35 miles per hour, so he's more than double that. Well, honestly, he did more like a sidearm baseball Leon throw. Yeah. Having survived blows from various large and burly BOWs, okay, he even fine. matched the strength of Umbrella Agent Jack Krauser. Krauser was strong enough to perform a 30-foot vertical jump. Generally, men can pull off a 2-foot vertical jump at most, making Krauser potentially 15 times stronger than the average man. And that's true, because he was, he did have a flaw in him. It's like he has zero weaknesses. Oh, country, boomstick. Leon has his fair share of baggage. Ada. He's pretty gullible, oftentimes tricked by those wilier than himself. Hey, Ada. Is it just me? I'm glad they're... Everybody always ignore what I'm glad that they're doing a remake, or remake slash, like, re, uh, like... Like, full remaster of, uh, of Resident Evil 2 and 3. Cool. Well, like they did with uh, like they did with one the R E make yeah. Leon's mental state has become more fragile and more reliant on alcohol. Much like Chris, you and me both, pal. He always needs a little chaos in his life, and when it comes down to it, that's what makes him such a friggin' badass. Better try a new trick, cause that one's getting old. Nice toss. Upon first impression, Frank West seems to just be your average journalist. But he's covered wars, you know. He's far more than that. I'll say he's covered wars, you know. Called it. Sick. You called it. Called it. Regularly go far beyond the call of duty. There it is. One sucker experience. punched the it was president. This ironclad determination, which led him to a mall in the town of Willamette, Colorado, oh, where he found the zombie apocalypse. What? Did you just say zombies? But Frank's down there. No, he said Zambors. Big difference. And, and with his wrestling history and battlefield experience, he's got the skills to do it. Despite never having fired a gun at another person before Willamette, Frank discovered he's a natural when it comes to firearms. He's handy with all sorts of guns, like pistols, shotguns, machine guns, and a beautiful minigun. Oh, I love it. He's even got a <laughs> silver going. ghost, a unique pistol specifically designed for government agent Leon G Hey, wait a minute. But bullets can only last nah, so long wait. against a never-ending zombie horde, so Frank was forced to improvise. And thanks to being in a shopping mall, he had plenty of options. By God uh, did he. choices like sledgehammers, baseball bats, and chainsaws to out-of-the-box picks like shampoo, lipstick, lawnmowers, and a shopping cart, Frank has an uncanny ability to effectively weaponize pretty much anything he gets his hands on. Garbage, toys, food, you name it. This guy does not overlook anything. Woo! Mm. He even 
and uses his camera flash as a weapon. His primary camera appears to be a Nikon D100, which has a flash color temperature of 6000K, or crystal white. When used up close, it's nearly as effective on the eyes as a flash thing uh, Anyway, Frank survived this I didn't expect them to do that much color. research. His next step was obvious. Profit from it. He became famous overnight. He was named yep. the Hero of Willow hosted a TV show, and scored all sorts of endorsements. His love of using baseball bats to smash zombie skulls in even landed him a great commercial deal with Deadwood Pro Baseball. Damn, so he's making tons of money off of killing people. My dream. Pure venture right? capitalist. All these zombies were technically yep. people once, so when you really think about it, this whole situation is pretty freaking awesome. Ah, oh, living the dream, buddy. Wow, you earned it. Uh, uh, anyway, fame is a fickle mistress, and it wasn't long until Frank's 50 minutes of fame were cut short. Yep. He eventually became a college teacher, but not before several more encounters with the undead kind. And the more he fought him, the more creative he got about what? it. What? Frank's greatest asset is his impressive ingenuity. With nothing but his blood, sweat, and tears. And a shitload of duct tape. Frank and a shitload of duct tape. Combination Thank weapons. you. Like the paddle saw, where he took a kayak paddle and strapped on a couple chainsaws for a rip-roaring good time. Yep. The electric crusher is an invention combining the power of a car battery with the weight of a sledgehammer. Okay, Crafting there's the no way he could swing around like that. The Blitzkrieg is a freaking wheelchair powered by a car battery hey, firing machine that guns chair. all over the place. Damn. Stephen Hawking could have even beat death with that. He can make <laughs> a laser sword by sticking a gem into a flashlight. Don't ask me what? now. And the yeah. Reaper is the unholy union of sickle and samurai sword. Wow. And all that is just scratching the surface. He's even got combo vehicles what? like the exosuit. That's what? a suit made of slurping machines. Which shoots ice tornadoes. Talk about cool. What? Pun intended. Uh-huh. Stranger. He Frank gets ridiculous. He arcade machine to miraculously copy some of the powers of fellow Capcom characters. You're a wizard, Frankie! No, Wait. he's not magic. What? These powers come directly from costumes most commonly obtained from the machine. Oh, okay. hey! He can don Ryu's key to perform hurricane kicks, or Mega Man X's armor complete with the Mega Buster. You are what you wear. Speaking of costume changes, sadly, Frank eventually was caught by zombies and wound up becoming another mindless slave of the undead horde. But it's okay. He got better. Frank has pulled off a lot of impressive feats. Despite having oh. little formal training aside from maybe a three-day combat journalist crash course, he's killed hundreds, maybe thousands They actually of zombies, cured him of zombification. Him Yay. The highest body counts in video game history. Because one of the really things was too. he, he um... Full of zombies, limbs, and head off. No problem. Um, and in the exosuit, he's pushed around a two-ton car. He's tough enough to survive long falls and devastating He was uh, infected with the, the zombie virus. To had to be taking Zombrax in order to uh, per hour in keep, from to exactly. keep from turning. He can even hop off zombies' heads like a ninja so well that the zombies <laughs> barely even notice. Wait, they don't notice that he's literally jumping off their heads? <laughs> Crowd surfing? How the hell does he pull that off? Very careful. But Frank has fought more than just mindless zombies. Yeah, like some crazy clowns with chainsaws and a freeze gun. Oh, and man, plenty of other psychomaniacs. <laughs> Including Lance Corporal Calder, the world's first intelligent soldier zombie. Also, I think it's important to note many of these feats were performed in a span of 72 hours with no sleep or rest. According to a study on sleep deprivation in 2010, an average human's physical and mental health begins to severely deteriorate after 36 hours of no sleep, yep. resulting in disorientation and even hallucinations. Yeah. Here I thought heavy drinking was the only way to legally hallucinate. Well, time to make <laughs> Netflix until I triple. Whether by inhuman stamina or just a shit ton of adrenaline, Frank was in peak condition for twice as long as he should have been. There's that journalist determination again. Sure, he may be a bit of a self-serving asshole, but he's pulled off the impossible more than once, even when he got into his 50s. Once a survivor, always a survivor. Snag your very own disposable, digital disposable camera. It's fantastic. Ooh. I mean it. Seriously. I need a raise. <laughs> All right. Next part, Mitch. Have a seat. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, or in this case, just gentlemen, because Heather has a migraine. She went upstairs. I hope she goes to sleep.
Uh, okay. Place your bets. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mike is going Leon, obviously. I mean, obviously, but, like, that's bananas. I've never played Dead Rising. Like, this guy literally built, like, an Iron Man suit out of... Slurpee machines. Yeah. That's... It, it's just like it's just like Obadiah Stain said. Frank West did this with two Slurpee machines and a mall, cool. and was, a box of scraps. But seriously though, I mean, like, that's kind. I of, think that's Dead Rising Four, actually. I think so. Yeah. I mean, that's so off the wall that I, I mean, I know like you know, Leon's killed some pretty big stuff, but like that's kind of bananas. Yep. Know? Like ice tornadoes, seriously. Yep. Yeah. So. Yep. Um. Just do a quick time event and dive roll out of the way or something. Yeah. Nate, what do you got? I got Leon. Leon is a better... Leon's better trained. Leon's younger. Leon has probably the better arsenal. The the best base arsenal. The best improvised arsenal? Frank. No doubt, Frank. But I'm going to be honest. Leon... I think Leon's got this. This is... This is a ridiculous fight. Like it, I still don't see how you put a trained government agent, you know, a highly trained, you know, fairly well supplied because you know that merchant had all had kinds of everything. Yeah, I mean it's it's it is a fantasy, but they try and keep it grounded to some degree. You know, I mean it's this like is Frank West we're talking. But about. then Frank West, like that's like that. This that is my mind. this is a man who weaponized a mascot head by attaching a bunch of drills to it. So you'd just put it on, and then it would just drill into the zombie's head. Yikes. Jesus. Yeah, I got nothing. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm really torn on this one, but I feel like I have to go Leon. So I, so we're all saying Leon. I think so. I think we're all saying Leon. I'm kind of worried, though, because I, yeah, I was not aware of all this. You weren't aware of how nutty it got. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like, you know. It gets real out there. Like, Dead Rising 1 was fine. Yeah. Dead Rising 2 is when they started bringing in the combo Well, atta- stuff. attaching things together with duct tape is one thing, but, like, you know, like, full-on, like, Tony Stark levels of robotics is something I was not expecting. Yeah. Slur- with slurping machines. I don't know, man. This is, this is going to turn into a whole thing. Mm. I, I think so, too. So, yeah, I, I think we're all going for Leon. So, Nate, push Bhutan. Outbreak containment. Yet there are still reports of looters within the city. Who knows what these people think is worth braving certain doom to get? Sweet, just what I was looking for. There's the serve bot head. Yeah. So it's like a Lego. What are you doing? Uh, no, the serve bots are from uh, Mega Man Legends. Stop me before, pal. Wait. He's like, I got a shopping cart. Knocked his gun away. Oh. This is my store. Batter up. Mm. Nice night. See you in a flash, buddy. <laughs> oh, oh. The arcade machine. Okay. So the fight is also involving zombie survival. B. Give it up, man. You can't keep up with me. Wanna bet? I've covered wars, you know. There it is. Start say shooting car batteries is a That's horrible nice. idea. It really is. Oh, hey. Speaking of horrible ideas, whatever that thing is. Katana, Scythe plus Scythe. Katana. Yeah, it does. Oh, hey. I saw Phoenix Wright. Well, he turned into Leon for a second, too. Uh-huh. I mean... <laughs> 
That's not how that works. Oh, this is a bad idea. Slurpy machines. Nice to meet you. Why don't you chill out? He would. He would. He's gonna do it. Game over. There it is. Ah. Yep. KO. Yep. Something tells me Frank won't be coming back from the dead this time. Frank's cheeky strategies and endlessly creative arsenal certainly put up a good fight. But in the end, Leon just had him beat in nearly every other category. Yep. Frank was one tough cookie, but Leon's superhuman abilities were just more impressive. Frank pushed the two-ton car, right? Yes, which is similar to Leon holding back the shark's two-ton biting force. But his boulder feat was much more impressive. By comparing the boulder's size to Leon, it appears to have weighed around nine tons at minimum. While Leon did have help pushing it, even half of nine tons yeah. is much heavier than anything Frank's lifted or pushed. Leon and Frank seemed equally tough, but Leon was definitely quicker. Bullet timing, laser dodging, and hell, Leon's speed and precision with his knife on its own is more impressive yep. than any speed feat Frank's got. But in the end, the most important question was whether or not Leon could cope with Frank's insane weaponry and unpredictable creativity. But Leon's seen plenty of crazy shit in his career, and fought lots yeah. of surprising and off-putting monsters. His years of formal training and more consistent combat records certainly lent him the experience needed to win. He's survived numerous battles with enemies powerful enough to one-shot him, and he's shown plenty of creative strategy and critical thinking mid-fight. Like when he fought Tyrant Glenn, using momentum from his own injuries and throwing a freaking motorcycle through the air. Leon was just too fast, too strong, too experienced, and too badass. He was frankly on his game. The winner is Leon Kennedy. I remember that moment. Yep. Are you watching this episode of Death Battle if you want to check out commentary? Yeah, no. That was a little box right over About what I expected, but I never know. Sometimes I throw you a curveball. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I expected it. That went pretty much exactly the way I expected. Yeah. Like, you've seen Leon do, like, ridiculous feats. Oh, stupid, stupid stuff. Yeah. Or can be, I mean, totally cartoony almost, but, I mean, not... Not to the point of like turning into like say, you know, Mega Man in the midst of a zombie fight. <laughs> yeah. Can can you go back to to that scene so we could do like a frame by frame of like who all he turns into? Oh, he definitely turned into Leon at one point, which I thought would have been pretty interesting. That would have been great. So okay, yeah, go Let's go slow motion. Yeah, give us like the maximum slow. The big slow. Give me maximum slow. Okay, that should be good. Oh, mute that, please. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Ryu, Ryu Phoenix Wright, uh, Felicia from from Darkstalkers. from Darkstalkers. Who was that? Okay, Ryu, Ryu, Phoenix Wright, Phoenix Wright, Felicia, gross. Don't do that. That Dante. was Dante, Leon, Leon, and then Mega Man. Okay, Mega Man X. Okay, so yeah, there All we right. go. I find it interesting that one of the ones that they showed in the the game, like in the um, the rundown, was the main character from uh, Ghost Trick, which is a really good game that does not get enough praise. That game's real good. <laughs> you know how he could have won? How's that? He turned into Ada. Oh. <laughs> Peter turned into Ada. No, it was bad enough that he turned into Felicia. That was Leon. No. Leon would have just been like, "Why are you wearing Ada's what? dress?" And Frank could just be like, "Oh, I borrowed it from her when uh, we uh, hooked up last night." No. Oh, uh. Jesus. So okay, that went pretty much exactly the way we were expecting. Yeah, I expected. that was a weird fight. Yeah, it was it was real weird. It's it was a, something. It's a weird pick for a fight. They're not evenly matched no, at all. No, they're not. So at all. I don't know. 
I'm, I'm, I'm a little worried that they might be running out of ideas. No, no, they're not. I'm a little worried. I mean, honestly, there's, there's still I mean, a lot okay, of verses. Pit, Pit versus Sora was, you know, that that's a match that makes sense. Twilight Sparkle versus Raven. I don't, I don't know. Well, that wait. one's, that one's pushing it a little bit. At, at, from what I understand of, you know, well, people Teen said... Titans and My Little Pony. Um, okay, is this is the newest one, right? Yeah, this is the most recent. Okay, you need to. Sh- we we have to look at who's next. We have to. You you need to. Because we're in slow mo still. Yeah, I got it. Let's see. So, well, I'm, well, I'm sure we can see it in slow mo. And... Yeah. Kiko, are you okay? Doctor, Doctor Strange, Strange. Oh. versus Doctor Fate. Okay, all right. You were saying that's actually a good fight. Yeah, that's gonna be pretty cool, actually. That's actually a good Strange fight. versus Fate. That's very yeah. interesting. Damn. That's that's fine. That's a good fight. Uh, except that Doctor Fate's an asshole, so I'm pulling for Doctor Strange the whole way there. Okay. Doctor Fate's an asshole. Il dottore fate. Like, seriously, he's a douchebag. He does kind of take over people. He is a douche. Canoe. Well, that's that's the helmet. Yeah. Not. Oh, the guy inside the. I'm talking the guy inside. Oh, because guy well, inside. Multiple people have worn the helmet, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, no, he's. So I feel like sometimes people don't always want to wear the fake helmet. No. No. But he's. Anyway. All right, so that went pretty much the way we expected. I'm, yeah, it's it's nice that that happens every now and again. Yeah, it's nice. So, uh, yeah, I guess video over. Uh, yeah, I like honestly, I expected it. Good job. I everybody. expected Leon job, to. Everybody. I expected Leon to win. I mean, I, I, you always expect that. You always yeah, expect. I mean, like the most, like the best one to win. Unless something absolutely cheatsy doodle comes out of nowhere. Oh, yeah. And completely well, see, that's throws what I was worried about. Wrench. So I thought some of that stuff was just so off the wall that it would, like, you know. Yeah, but Leon's been through so much shit. Right. Yeah, yeah he, yeah. So, honestly, I'm, I'm interested to see that, I'm interested to see how Strange vs. Fate plays out. But with this one, I, I'm pretty sure that, you know, yep, I'm we happy all got with, what we expected. I'm happy with the outcome. It's exactly the way I expected it. And yeah. Yeah. So, uh. Until next time. Yeah. Uh, bye. <laughs> I don't know. It's okay. Still no good at outros. It's okay. Hey, if uh, you want to watch the original, link in the description down below. Check out Death Battles. They have a litany of Death Battles for you to check out. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of them that they've done. Some also, of them make more sense than this. Yeah. And also, uh, if you want to check out our Discord and our Patreon, links are down in the description as well. Uh, and uh, until next time, I'm Nate. I'm Ben. Micah. And Chico's over here, holding down the fort on puppy blanket. And Heather's upstairs. And we'll, we'll see you later, everyone. Peace out.